Hello everyone, I'm Ashok. Welcome to module 3, Statistics for Data Science. In this module, we are going to learn about exploratory data analysis. This module is very important because this is the one we do with the data to get an intuition about the data, understand the data better before we go for the machine learning model. Let's get started. The first topic is measures of central tendency. So if you have data, so if you want to uh, understand uh, uh, a central tendency, right? So there are three measures of central tendency: mean, median, and mode. Okay. Let's do it more practically than looking at the, the definitions and stuff. So I'm going to start. Uh, okay. So let me start my Jupiter. Jupiter notebook. I'll go ahead and do a quick Jupiter notebook. Okay, I'll go full screen. It is full screen. So I'll just hide this. Okay. Okay. Um, let's say we have. Um, Let's say you got an offer from an organization, all right? In fact, you got an offer from two organizations. So I'm going to call it as org A and org B, okay? Both of this organization has made a uh, same offer. So your package is exactly the same. And let's assume that everything else, including your job title and roles and responsibilities is also same. You'd like to decide which organization to join based on the other salaries, other colleagues' uh, salaries or packages. The reason could be, well, if the company is paying higher salaries to your colleagues, other employees, it might you might have a better environment because the more the salary levels, happier the employees and also more skilled colleagues you might have. You have a better environment for learning and also uh, to, 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 to do your work. Be happy uh, an environment. If the average salaries are lower, or the salaries are lower, then you have a you know, not so better environment. So you would like to take a decision of which organization to join or which offer to accept based on uh, the salaries range or salaries of the organization. So I'm gonna simply assume some salary levels. Let's say you have 30, uh, uh, for 40K US dollars. So all of your salaries are, let's say in US dollars, US dollars in thousands per annum. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so 40K, 60K, 80K, 120K, 55K, 40K, uh, 60, 60K, 55K, 34K. You can have junior employees as well uh, and all kinds of salaries. So 120K, let's say 100K. So these are the salaries of organization A, okay? And then I'm going to simply just copy paste the entire line. It's more easier. I'll simply change this into B and I'm gonna tweak certain salaries. So I'm gonna say this is actually 60K, this is uh, 80K, this is 35, 30K, and this is actually uh, 130K, this is 35k, this is 50k, this is um, uh, 20k, oh, sorry, 30k, 20k is too low, this is uh, 60k, and this is actually 42k, and this is 35k, and let's say the last one is your 50k. So if you look at this, which organization you join, can you do a math and let me know which organization uh, you like to join? Just looking at the numbers, these are the numbers you have. How do you decide? Well, you can't really decide looking at the numbers. Of course, there are few numbers you can still look at, come up with some kind of rough conclusion. But if you have uh, uh, a thousand employee salary, 10,000 employee salary, uh, how do you look at it and come to a conclusion? 
So you cannot look at each and every data and, and do it. So you need a, some, some sort of a measure or an index to identify it. One of the, the, the well-known index is your mean, which is nothing but your average. So I'm going to just run this and I call it as, let's say, measures of central tendencies, tendencies. And uh, is mean, median, and mode. Okay, so these are your measures of central tendencies. Okay, so we'll start with mean. So mean, I'm going to use a package called uh, Scientific Python or SkyPy. So uh, I assume a basic Python knowledge uh, and importing packages and all. So I'm going to simply say import uh, skippy as or skypy as sp that's a short short name or alias name so i'm going to print average um, average or i will say mean salary mean salary of or a and then that would be sp mean mean salary of org b okay okay so now you see that org a has 65 as a mean salary and org b has 54 okay so org a has a higher salary org b has a lower salary on an average so it's easy for you to now decide which organization to join of course you will join org a because on an average, the average salary is higher for organization A, which means that you have better employees or better colleagues, happy colleagues, more skilled colleagues, so that you have a better environment to work. So this is one of the major purpose of your measures of central tendency. To compare the data, uh, we can use a means, and that gives you the center of these data distributions by which you can say which is higher, which is lower. Great. So wonderful. So uh, why do you need median and mode then? Mean seems to be perfectly fine. Well, let's take an, another example of the same data, but this time I'm going to um, change the data a bit. Okay. So org B, organization B, knowing that people look at the average salary happens in some places. Um, they'll tweak the data. So of course, they're not going to give the all the data. So only you're looking at averages and deciding. So org B has done something like they have put a senior manager's salary or director salary. Normally, uh, chief executives or executive level salaries are not added in the average salaries because the salaries are complex. They have stock options. They have higher salaries, and really depends on what kind of control or what kind of uh, you know profiles they have in running this company and stuff like that. So. Putting a senior executive salary in, uh, in, in, the, in, in the average salary is, is actually statistically it's wrong. Typically, we only include the working class salary in the average salaries. But uh, ORB wants to project the salary higher. So they have included uh, their senior executive's uh, salary in the salary. So uh, he is getting a million dollars, let's say. Typically, they get much more, one, more than that. So a million dollars. So thousand thousands. So they have a thousand dollars being added to the salary. Great. So let's do the same thing as we have done before. So your mean should be giving us good indication, right? So if I look at it, what happened now is your org B has 133 and org A has only 63. So which company you join? Well, if you know, if you don't know what happened before, you would be saying that I will be joining org B because there's a much higher salary. But what actually happened is org B has uh, a data which is an outlier, which is an extreme value, your senior executive salary being added. So mean is not giving you a proper indication. So it's actually giving you a wrong center, right? So it's like, I'm going to write it down here. Mean is not a preferred or, or a recommended measure if you have extreme values. If you have extreme values, 
the mean is not a proper measure. So mean is not a recommended measure if you have an extreme value because as you can see it's giving you a wrong indication of the center. So what you do? Well, let's look at medium. Median, sorry. Median is, what is median? As I, I think I have discussed this before. Median is if you have a data like this, let's say you have uh, uh, salaries, for example. So 30K, 80K, 20K, 40K, 90K, 100K, okay? And something like this. So if you want to find a median of this data, so we take and first of all, we sort it down in an order. That's the first thing. So let's say uh, 20, 30, 40, and 80, 90, 100, and then find the middle one. So it's an even distribution. So you, there is no middle number. Actually, we have two middle numbers. These are two middle numbers. We simply take an average of it. So 40 and 80, average would be 60. 60 is the median. What does it mean? There are three people under 60 and three people over 60. So 60 is the middle value line which divides the data into two equal parts. The three employees below 60 and three employees above 60. So that is the that is what you mean by median. It gives you as it's actually um, 50 percentile to be more precise. We also call it as quartile 2. Median is also called as quartile or second quartile. Okay, second quartile or Q2 because it gives you 50 percentile means it's a center value and that divides the data into two equal parts. So if you look at here, uh, uh, org A has 63.5. Let me find out the medians first. So median, just change the function here. Okay, so I also change this. Median, median. Okay, so uh, you can see that median for org A is 55 and the median for org B is 50. So it means in organization A, 50% employees have a salary more than 50% uh, of the employees have a salary more than 55 and other 50% have a less than 55. In org B, 50% of the employees have a salary more than 50, which is less than org A, and the 50% employee have a salary less than 50K USD per annum. This clearly says median salary of org A is higher. It also indicates that org B has some extreme value on the higher side. That's why you have a very high mean, but when you look at the median, median is 50. So usually, if you have extreme values, it's better to look at both median and mean. In fact, median is a better measure in this case. Median is recommended when you have extreme values. All right, so that is the purpose of your median, all right? And median is also called as, as I was writing before. So median is also called as, median is second quartile second quartile quartile is percentile so it is actually second quartile or q2 means it's actually one quartile is one by four so you also have q1 q1 is first quartile and q2 is our median and q3 is your third quartile so q1 is pretty simple when you look at q1 q1 is 25 percent mark which means the value you get in quartile one q1 means that 25% people in the organization have a value less than salary less than this Q1 and 75% people have a salary more than Q1. If you look at the Q3, 75% of the people have less than Q3 and 25% people have more than Q3, okay? I hope that that explains the median as well as your Q1 and Q, sorry, Q1 and Q3, okay? We also have another measure uh, in central measures of tendency measures of central tendency, which is called as mode. Mode is simply highest frequent occurring. Mode is the highest frequent value data in the distribution. High, more frequent, highest, highest frequency uh, data in the distribution, data distribution, okay. Okay, 
So uh, mode is not in your scientific Python or SkyPy. It's more statistical measure. So you have to import a package called a stats from SkyPy. So I'm going to say from SkyPy import stats. Okay. And then I'm going to use the same print commands just to save my time. And here I'm going to say mode of salary. Do you have a mode for B? Let me check. Uh, probably you might. Let me check. I'll just run it down. Mode is like more frequent uh, data. So mode and stats mode. So mode of your uh, org A is 55. It occurred three times. So 55 is the mode of the uh, org A occurred three times. And the mode of org B is 30 occurred two times. Mode in this case does not make much sense. It just gives you highest frequency. It doesn't really help you to find the center. So, uh, but in continuous statistics, the discrete statistics we're dealing with. In continuous statistics, mode has a significant value addition. But in this case, it does not have a great value addition. So mean, median, mode are called as measures of central tendency. All right. So uh, I have slides which you can quickly go through. So just a description of the things which I've done hands on. Okay. So that brings us to the end of the first um, topic, which is measures of central tendency. Then the next video, we talk about measures of data variability.